And Sonia Massey uh, is a lady, I think she was 36, um, had a little bit of a mental health issue, um, but you know, whatever, whatever. Um, she was marked. She called the police. Uh, she had, there was a burglary situation, or she assumed it was a burglary situation. Um, when the police officer got there, he, you know, everything seemed cool, you know what I'm saying? But she was, she, you know, there's a specific officer out of the two. There's one that she just kept acting like, you know, she could see, like, bro was possessed or something. She kept acting like she could see something in bro, you know what I mean? Uh, and she kept, you know, acting like that. And, you know, if you watch the body cam, because we, we're going out, I'm telling you the story based off the body cam footage that I saw. Um, you know, she's kind of just monitoring this guy, watching this guy's movement. He didn't seem like he was doing anything wrong at first. He was chilling. He, you know, he seems cool. Yeah, you know, they knocked at the door multiple times trying to grab her attention. And they couldn't get her attention. Whatever she was doing in there, they didn't know. Long story short, maybe after like maybe two, three, maybe five minutes of knocking and all that good stuff, she opens up. The alcohol was good. She said she was naked. She was getting ready. All right, cool. She comes, you know, they ask her, you know, what's good? You know, we don't check the whole spot. There's nobody there. You know, you call this about a but there's nobody around. All right, she, conversation, conversation, conversation. They get into the spot. While they're at the spot, they try to get her information. As they're trying to get her information, they realize that she has a pot of water on the stove. They realize she has a pot of water on the stove. One of the deputies tell her, one of the cops tell her, hey, go turn that shit off, man. We ain't trying to, you know what I mean? She's like, okay. She goes over there. While she's there trying to turn it off, oh boy, that she's been looking at all this time, like she like she can sense something or something like that. That mind you, you know, if you, at, at the beginning he was cool, everything was cool, but eventually you notice that he could tell that she was mentally disturbed. You could he could tell because her even us watching the video, we could tell. You know what I'm saying? Her, her mannerisms and stuff like that. So he was now more on guard when he was dealing with her, right? Um, and on, on guard negatively, you know what I'm saying? Uh, more aggressively, you know what I mean? Um, and you can tell that from his manners. So while she's there and he's asking, um, you know, he's, you know, she, uh, she's grabbing, you know, turning off the water. Um, he says, I think he says something to her. I can't remember what he says. And she says, uh, uh, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, right? So she says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus to the God that she's been looking at all this time. Mind you, as I said, there are two officers, right? There are two officers, but there's one, just one officer her whole focus has been on. It, it seemed like she didn't even realize the other guy was there or something. Like, you know, it, she didn't care about the other guy at all. This one guy, her mind was just, hot. everything was just so focused on that guy, right? So she, you know, uh, uh, um, she tells him, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. He says, his response to I rebuke you, her, you know, I saying I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, his response is, you better not, I'll shoot you in the face. That's your response to somebody saying I rebuke you in the name of Jesus? You know what I'm saying? That, that leaves a lot of questions. <laughs> like, why, why, are you so, why are you so scared of being rebuked in the name of Jesus? I'm not, a, look, look, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not, Christian, I'm I'm spiritual. I, I understand all religions. I accept all whatever, whatever. So, my thing now to that is why why would you feel so threatened by just that statement, right? He, you know. So let's let's keep going with the story. He said, "You better not." I shoot you in the face. He, he's reaching for his gun, right? Mind you, why, once he says that, he doesn't even wait to see her reaction. I shoot you in the face, and he pulls out his gun and points it to her. See, if you wanted to scare somebody, you scare somebody. You tell them I shoot you, they, you wait to see their response. You know what I mean? You're telling them that because you're trying to deter them. If you're, going, if you're trying to do something, you're just gonna do it, you know what I mean? And he was clearly trying to do it because he was reaching and pulling it out while he was saying it. I don't even know why he was even saying it to me, real. <laughs> because he was just gonna do it. And old girl, she leaves the pot, Mind you, the pot is right there on the stove. It's not like she, you know what I mean? She leaves the pot and crouches down. Once she pulls his gun out, he moves forward. While she's there like this, she, if you watch the video in slow motion, you see she reaches for the pot again, but not, see you can't, she reaches for the pot like this, right? You don't throw water like this, right? Cause he, he said, I'm, I'm saying this because of course, he end up shooting her right there, right? 
um, his assumption was that she was trying to throw water at him. I don't know how many, I don't know how, I don't know who throws hot water like this. Because if you throw it like this, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna get on you, right? A theory is that she was trying to use the pot to shield herself. And that makes sense. A lady that's scared, you know what I'm saying? Whether mentally deranged or not, if you're scared, you're thinking about covering your head, your face, your vital organs, you know what I'm saying? So, long story short, bruh murked her, right? Bruh murked her, cold-bloodedly. And if you watch a body cam, his partner is in distress. His partner is like, yo, like, yo, like, like, fuck, like, fuck, you know? And he's like, bro, hell, he's so, he's so nonchalant about it, so casual, like, go, so, you know, yeah, nah, nah, bro, bro. hell, nah, I'm about to let her burn me with, yeah, pour hot water on me, what, nah, nah, hell, nah, but, so I'm gonna just kill her. You, mm, you don't want someone, let's assume, let's just assume she was trying to pour hot water on you. Yeah, there are two things. One, you could have either stepped away, right? Or told her to step away, right? You didn't give her none of them commands. Drop the pot, drop the pot. You literally said, drop the pot. I was, you know, I'm gonna shoot you in the face. You pull out your gun, drop the pot, drop the pot. While you're shooting her, right? Already, right? You saying drop the pot. You didn't say step away from the pot. What do, what do police officers say when you have a weapon? Step away from the weapon. The pot was on the stove. She's not supposed to drop the pot. Step away from the pot, <laughs> right? That that should be the command, right? So you can see a lot of a lot of all the the holes in in bruh's action, right? You say because I, as I said, I've, I've, I've observed it and observed it. it. I think bruh might have been intoxicated that day. He might have been having a bad day. You know what I'm saying? Because if you all watch that video, the full body cam, you gotta watch the beginning right all the way till after because I'm, I'm what i'm narrating right now what we're talking about right now the in-depth talk we're talking about right is the full thing you got to watch the video this is, this is this is can we talk about it we're talking about it right so um if you watch that full thing you get to see that he 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 wasn't like his partner you know maybe different personalities but it just it was different after he shot her he was so calm about it no stress, no, no, no distress at all, no, nah, fuck, no, nothing. His partner was all, mind you, his partner didn't shoot a shot, right? Which, he's lucky that he didn't shoot a shot because, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that's a huge problem with the police officer, like police department or police, whatever the system is, you're supposed to support your partner, whether they're right or wrong, up until after the incident. That's stupid, right? Because then you can... <laughs> If you support your partner like that, if he had supported his partner by letting the shots off, he would have been doing life or whatever the partner is about to get. He's about to be doing that alongside his ass, right? So they need to, like the, the police system. It's it's not like we don't need to defund the police. No, 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 no. We need to work better on the police. Policing needs to be like I seen someone say we need police for the police. That's true. In the military, the the military, there's a military police, right? There needs to be police for the police, as well as the policies in the police is said, like the, you know, police in itself needs to be worked on extensively. They said, oh boy, this guy that just murked Sonia Massey, right? This sheriff deputy, which is crazy, right? Isn't that supposed to be higher than just a regular officer or something? Anyway, um, he had had two DUIs already. He had been... Uh, he had moved within six years, within, uh, he had moved to, what was this six years or something? He had moved to six, six different agencies or something like that. If this guy, if you, like this, <laughs> police is there to protect and serve, right? You're not there. So it's, it's the same thing that people that are like leaders or um, people that, that are entrepreneurs or people that bef before they become entrepreneurs, they, how they think being an entrepreneur, being a leader, being a, this is they think it's all fun these people will serve you until you get to that position you realize bro any position of leadership it sucks you quickly if you're someone that likes a quiet life you know you thought being a leader was going to give you that quiet life where people will serve you leave you alone to stuff you quickly realize that bro being a leader any in any form or capacity the people that are enjoying you are the people that are not leading you are a slave you're there serving people 
Now you have to cater to people's needs. People that you don't really might not give a fuck about. Like on some real shit. Right? And that's what being a leader is. It's not, it's not fun, right? The, the, the pros of being a leader is like this much to the cons. If you're looking at it as per like, if you go into like for benefit reason, like the benefits of being a leader, like the bro, there's more uh uh but as I said, more cons in the sense of, bro, you're, you're there to serve. A leader is supposed to be basically a slave to the people. These days, people think leadership as a, as a point of, of corruption. People want to be, in a, be a leader to, to, you know what I'm saying, to go there and just flaunt shit and waste somebody. No, that's not what being a leader is. If you, if you understand leadership, people run away from leadership positions. Where, where I come from, at least when I was, you know what I mean? People don't, nobody wants to be a leader, nigga. Like, nigga, I'm trying to live a simple, chill life. Nigga, I'm trying to be, what the fuck? Lead, nigga, what? Nigga, I ain't got time for that shit. Out here, or if not, I mean, it's just really with the times. It's not just out here, you know? With the time, now people want to be in leadership positions not because of the service. People want to be in there just because they want to run shit. They want to dominate shit and they want to misuse shit. And that's why, you know, things be going the way things be going, right? And being a police officer, you're there to serve. Your job is to protect and serve. I'm saying this, I'm not a police officer, but I can say this. I've worked with, my previous job was, I've been doing security for a while. I, I'm not doing it now. I'm full-time content creator. But I used to do security for a while, right? <clears throat> so I worked with, my most recent one, I, I worked with a lot of ex-military and police officers, right? And one of my friends, He's probably, he might be watching this stream right now. I don't know, you know, he's a police officer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I met him through the job. And he told me the truth. He's like, bro, when they train them, they train them literally to see blue against every other color. So once they put on that, like, for the, it's a fraternity. It's a real deal, like, it's, well, not, it came, fraternity, sorority, sorority, it came, no sorority. But you know what I mean? It's a, it's a, they, they t it's a gang. It's a, re it's like damn near a religion. They take it very serious, right? If they feel that way about it, but there's no order, no true justice in within it, and these are the people that's supposed to justice us or lead us, all that good stuff, you can see why things like this keep happening. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because if you know that my guys will have my back, regardless, you know what I'm saying, how this shit goes, no matter if I'm good on, good on it, bad on it, they're going to have my back. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to just do what I want to do. Some days, if I feel good, I'm gonna be good. If I feel bad, I'm gonna be bad. What the fuck gonna happen? Most of all, they gonna I get fired. I can go get a job for another police agency, uh, uh, police department. You know what I'm saying? This this is the problem with that with that mindset, right? And 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 going even further, the, it seems like they don't teach them. Like first of all, guns are too readily available for these niggas. I understand in different positions, like different environments. Yeah, you gotta have guns. But you need to also have non-lethal, uh, uh, a non-lethal way to take people down. It can't always just be straight go to gun. I thought they, all, but I thought they used to have tasers next to them. If they need to make a gun, like like two, they need to give these niggas two guns. One with like maybe like a, a, a rubber bullets or steel around, like something that will really hurt, like real deal, like like you know what I'm saying, like it hit you, it you put you. I know that shit like that. I've seen, I've seen them. You know what I'm saying? Some shit they even sell like regularly. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, all they gotta do is get these niggas, bro, give them some of that. So, they, so, bro, cause they keep reaching for their gun because that's just what's available to them. So that's what I'm saying, it's so much, there's a human element of like, these these people, it's a job. Like, make people make it seem like, and some of these people might not even wanna be in that fraternity of a job type shit, like of a police department. It might just be a job to them. They just, bro, I'm not about to die, bro, just because I'm getting paid this amount. Now I'm trying to go home to my family. So once they see any little detail, any little hint of danger, fear, the regular fear that you and I feel hits them. But guess what? They got a gun right next to them. You see what I'm saying? So guess what they're going to do? They're going to pull that bitch out and a scared person now has a gun. They are trained, right? But all that training goes out the window if, you, if it's not constantly instilled in you, right? And that's what I'm saying. The training plays a role in it. You know, if it factors into the human element of it. You can't just tell police, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you're, you're giving these people so much power, right? This power of like, bro, a gun. You're telling regular people not to have a gun and you're giving these people guns. 
What if this person, like, okay, let's just, on some sci-fi shit, some crazy shit, somebody just decides to control all the, the minds of all the police officers. Then they could just walk in everywhere and murk at least 50, basically, at least 50% of the world's population will, will pass if somebody just controlled all the police. You get what I'm saying? So with that understanding of how much responsibility you're giving to these individuals, people's lives are in their hands, you would think you would vet them a lot more. The thing now, some people say, oh man, because I was thinking about it while I was watching this, I'm like, okay, what if what if there's a shortage of police officers? So they just hire people, you know, just to, you know, to bolster the numbers and looks and all that good stuff. I'm like, bro, I would, I would think it's better to, it's better that crime goes up, right? And you have legit police officers, right? That when they do show up to the scene, they do their job purely. Then for you to have a bolstering number of fake fuck, dumbass fuck, you know what I'm saying, people that's gonna ruin shit, because then it's going, there's, no matter even the good people doing shit, the bad people doing, everything is just going to be watered down. It's going to be hella gray and it's going to mess things up. It's, it's just, you know what I mean? It's, it's better to go with quality over quantity for anything, anything in life. Quantity is just never beneficial. I'm being for real. Even with, I'm talking about with food, with anything. Everything in life, quant, uh, quality is always better than quantity. Right, so I think they, they focus a lot on quantity, thinking that maybe it might a certain image. No, bro, because let's be realistic. Within each of these neighborhoods, people can police themselves. If police was not so corrupt, these gangs that were seen within the neighborhoods would not be so bad. There's something in this world called synchronicity or balance, right? If good go, if if the world goes, everybody starts acting so good. I promise you, there's going to be some way, somehow in the world, there will be some kind of bad that's going to come in to balance it out. It's balance, equality. Like, the universe understands balance. It's, it's just how it is. You go, you go, In this life, you will never just experience all good. It will be good some days, bad some days. You know, that's why you're not supposed to just let life dictate how, you, how your emotions run. You're supposed to be, you know, mentally sound because it's always going to be that. You, you yourself should not, you the one constant in between all this thing going on in life, right? So you you better dictate your own emotion and, you know, let, let, you know, let life happen. But that aside, you get what I'm saying? So, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, goodness. So in this, in this situation right here, bro, balance is going to always happen, right? <coughs> so regardless, bro, if, if, if you feel that you're going to, if, for example, you have a smaller quantity of good cops, great cops, awesome, perfect, but small quantity. I just said, I just said something about the universe and about balance. At first, it might seem like crime is at a high, but that small quantity of individuals, because they're doing such a good job, they are going to level it down to the balance that's needed because the universe loves balance. It's just how it is. That's it. I'm, I'm breaking it down to a simplistic form. You know what I'm saying? Truly, life is balanced. Anything, once things go out of balance, something comes in to balance it out. Think about it. Just look at your life and look at life in general. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, it's this up and it's never going to just be one thing all the way through. There will not be good without evil. There will not be evil without good. You know what I'm saying? Yin and yang, all that, whatever you want to believe, right? So, in this situation with these, with these cops and all these things, and there has to be some, they have to, they, there has to be, there has to be a, 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 a better vetting process for these individuals. You know what I'm saying? There has to be a vetting process for you because <laughs> I'm just saying, it's not gonna be beneficial. It's, I mean, it's not beneficial now, right? It's not beneficial because at, at first people might think, you know, maybe let's say the department might think, Oh, let's hire a lot of people. It might make us look good, but guess what? Just like this, right? You have a lot of bad cops or you have some bad cops in there, right? Just because of numbers. And the it, People then start averaging shit out. Like it, it then starts averaging out. You know what I'm saying? Like the real shit. Moments like this might then happen. It might be once, uh, uh, let's say once in a month or once in a year phenomenon, but you, you will start experiencing crazy shit like that. Where as opposed to if you had vetted your people properly and dealt with, yes, we ain't got enough people, but the people I have, I can trust them. I know they're going to do this job. They are good enough to handle the business. 
I think things will be different because there's no reason a, a man that had two DUIs is a sheriff's deputy. He has two DUIs. He's been moving from what within six agencies or uh, 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 been in, uh, through six agencies within what six years or something or, or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Come on, bro. You know what I mean? And if you, if you watch the body cam, when you know when other all the other officers came, they weren't really even talking to bro like that. Like they, they were just chilling. It's like they are they on either they didn't know the nigga like that or they didn't they didn't like they they expected shit like this. Like niggas just knew what was gonna go down. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody's like, hey, you good? Like, hey, what happened? You know, you don't got you ain't got friends in your department. Like, nigga, like <laughs> even your partner ain't trying to kick it with you. He's he's out there trying to he's walking around trying to handle business. You the only one just y'all y'all gotta watch the body cam. You know what I'm saying? Of course he was talking, he talked wet. Call her a bitch that she was crazy and some more shit and you know what I mean? It just, it just, it for me, I, I just blame the system. <laughs> As I said, earlier I was talking about how balance, how if you have a, just a little, if, 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 if you worry about less about quantity of cops and more of quality of cops, these gangs out here on these streets came out as a result of what? Trying to police themselves. That's what gangs were. That's what they started as. Social clubs, little groups, neighborhoods, maybe even to clean up the neighborhood, take care of themselves. That's how gangs started. When did they start going south? Yeah, they might have started fighting with each other and shit like that, but when did they start getting real serious? Right? It's when the cops start getting in there, right? And start fucking with it. Right? And most of this shit started even with cops. Like most of them even started because of cops. So my point when I'm saying is, Let's assume you take the cops out of the situation, right? Two ways. One, the gangs can kill each other. No stress for you, right? Two, they can either realize that, yo, okay, these niggas ain't fucking with us no more. Oh, we ain't got a reason. Uh, ain't, nobody, ain't nobody framing us for this shit. Oh, ain't nobody, uh, okay, cool. All right, niggas, I, I, I neighborhood straight. Okay, cool. If them niggas from the other side come through, then we, we know what it is, but our neighborhood good, we good, you know what I'm saying? Everybody good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, what is the main what is the major excuse that criminals give, right, for being criminals? Oh, cops, crooked cops, oh, the cops, oh, nigga, we don't trust the police. Okay, make the, tr the police trustworthy. Let's see what excuse criminals will give. I'm saying this as a retired criminal myself. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all niggas. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm not about to lie, sit here and lie, you know what I mean? So, get, cut off the excuse. You feel what I'm saying? Then let's see what the fuck happens. Let's, let's see how, if people are going to get reformed, if people will change, or if they're going to still keep clinging to that bullshit. Because let's be realistic, bro. Gangs, uh, street niggas, all that good stuff. It's only, a, it's, a, it's a small percent of us, like, in the whole, like compared to like the other population of people. The only reason why it seems so much like, oh, it's the shit, it's like, it's just because of like trends, like hip hop music, you know, shit like that, right? That's why it seems like, you know, it's the it thing. People want to dress like a street nigga. People want to do like this, you know what I'm saying? Da, da, da. People want to, you know what I mean? Like a gang, you want to use gang slang and all that. It's only because it's popular. It's not because there's a lot of them. No, it's just because it's popular. You know what I'm saying? If, if it wasn't popular today, you, you will get to really see the numbers. And I promise you, it's not that much. It's really not that much. You know, people that's really, you know what I'm saying? Like you talk a certain way, it doesn't necessarily mean you about a certain way. You gotta watch the person's mannerism, right? Watch their demeanor. That's how you know what somebody's really about. It's not about, you know what I mean? All, all this shit I'm saying right now, it don't mean shit. If you don't see me do it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we don't mean shit to me, right? If you don't see me do it. Take the message, forget the message. Um, but yeah, that's anyway, that's my thought about this whole, uh, RIP to, uh, Sonya Massey, bro. Um, I, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a sad situation, you know what I mean? I, and nobody wants to lose their kid, um, you know what I'm saying? And she had a son, and then her father had, like, oh man, I ain't even, because, you know, if, if we start talking about it, it's a sad thing, because the father, you know, you, you watch the father, a man, you know what I'm saying, that he just came out of, he said he had a triple bypass surgery or something like that, which is basically a heart surgery. You know, he was saying, bro, if this had happened with, with his old heart, he probably wouldn't have been alive to see it. Like, like to, you know, because 
it would have been too much for him. And I know I understand that shit because I got an old father myself. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like an old father, like old parents. So like, parents always want, they, 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 like my mother, I and my mother had a conversation. You know, I always be telling her, don't worry about it. You know, she'd be like, oh, you know, life is good. You know, so I, I, you know I, I be, you know, I come with my parents talking about how, you know, life gone, you know what I'm saying? If, life, if I'm struggling, you know, this, you know I'm, I communicate with my mom. Most, some of us are cl you know, close with our parents like that. And uh, when I be talking to my mom and shit, you know what I'm saying, she be feeling the pain like it's as though it's her, you know what I'm saying? And I be always telling her, calm down, you know, it's cool. So, and sometimes I'm just, you know, chill, it's good, we good. I, you know, it's going like this, but it's going to be better. She told me one day, she was like, yo, you, you can't understand until you have a child of your own. Like, you, you just can't, you can't grasp. It's just not possible. Like, she said, when you have a child, bruh, you stop thinking about yourself. It's, it's, you, normally as a normal human being, you, you think of yourself first. That's the first thing you think of. That's just natural. She said, when you have a child, that completely changed. Like, it, it just reflexes. Like, you think of that child first. So, if that child is, has that child eaten today? Has that child, you know, uh, brushed their teeth? Have they brushed no matter how old or young or whatever it is, are they okay? Do they? And then if the child has children of their own, then you start, you have another word. So she was trying to explain to me like being a parent is is really a, it's a it's a it's it's a lifetime thing. You just it don't you can't turn it off, and it, it is what it is. And you know you can imagine, you know what I'm saying? You survive a triple bypass surgery, you know what I'm saying? And then you get information about shit like this that your daughter, and for nothing, for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, like, for nothing. Like, you can't explain it. You, you don't even, like, you know what I mean? Like, what do you tell, like, how do you, what do you do? Like, how do you, how do you react? Like, what do you say? Like, how do you, you know, like, <laughs> I was watching the man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I was watching, I think he had a little, like a little clip of a press conference or something. Oh, oh, this man talking, and I just, I was just like, bro, that man's strong, bro. Like, and you can tell every word he's he's saying, he's holding back tears, you know. And he just like, you looking at the man like, damn, like, damn, you know what I'm saying? And you can tell he's an old school man, like an old, you know, the older generation man. So you know, stoic, trying to compose, and you know, and you just, you can, you can tell, bro. Like, man, fuck, man, we never uh, uh, bury our kids, type shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no kid. And I'm good on that. Uh, but that's that's crazy. That's a crazy situation. And then of course her son was there, uh, and they were saying that because this had happened. Um, this happened a while, not a while, but this happened. I think in uh, July of uh, so what, what were we in? We in July, but earlier this happened in July of uh, on the sixth. This happened on the sixth, right? So. We just getting all the, the video, body cam stuff now and all the good stuff, details, but this happened, you know, and that's usually how it be. Of course, when it, it ain't gonna pop up, you know, it ain't gonna blow up when it happens because they gotta investigate it some more. But the son was saying that, bro, when the thing happened, that they were just saying that somebody shot him, somebody shot. They never said it was a police officer that shot, you know, somebody shot, somebody shot. And, and all these things is part of that whole fraternity, police fraternity, whatever I was talking about, where they, they, they're trying to protect themselves, you know, uh, but it's like, bro, y'all got to cut that shit out because when y'all keep doing that shit, people can't trust y'all. And y'all job, your whole job depends on us trusting y'all. If humans, if, not humans, if citizens can't trust the police, I mean, look at it right now. Look at the situation right now. Look at it, how many years ago they were talking about defunding the police where a lot of police officers resign. Now, I remember, bro, when I was looking for a job where last year, police officers, bro, police officers, they were, they were giving hell incentives for people to be police officers, bro. You know what I'm saying? Of course, nobody was going to do that. I mean, I'm pretty sure some people took that job. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty, bro, it's a job, bro. It's like, it's not... We should not think of it as this glorified thing that it's a job. The same way some of us clock in on a job. Some people wake up and they don't like their job and they go there because of the money. Think about it like that. Every cop you see, think about that motherfucker might not like his job. So don't go fucking with him. And he, he have, you know what I'm saying? He has to murk your head because this is the problem with it. People like to flex muscle like, oh man, I'm, oh, I'm this, I'm, I'm a flexor. I'm a, I know my right. Bro, you might know your right and you might be absolutely right. But guess what? You're gonna be dead wrong in the ground by the time he go, they're gonna figure out that he's wrong. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, you gotta 
Oh shit, I said, you're gonna be you gonna be right in the ground by the time they figure out that he's wrong. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna be right there in the ground when you figure out you're wrong. So you can't be, you know what I'm saying? You can't be doing shit like that. Flexing muscle is cool, but you also gotta use, you gotta be smart about it. You can't just, you know what I mean? You gotta know how to address people and shit like that. All that, all that to say, man. Policing needs to be, you know, we need to do better, you know, and that's why with the whole thing they're talking about with the, um, Trump and the immunity, right, that he's going to give to Africa, 100% immunity, um, you know, how is that going to look, you know what I'm saying, in, situa in situations like this, how does that 100% immunity work, I don't know, I'm not even looking into the thing, I'm, as I said, I keep myself out there, I'm just throwing that in there, like, these are things that, you know, people are talking about asking, you know what I'm saying, so, who knows, you know what I mean, I, yeah, I ain't even gonna lie, I don't, I don't even know, you know what I mean? Because 100% immunity for cops is crazy. And then women not having the rights to their own body or control their body, you know what I'm saying? Choice of their own body, and that's another thing as well. Like, anybody not having choice of their body is crazy. The fact that this is even really, it's a discussion is crazy. <laughs> but, damn, that's fucked up. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Uh, I write you to Sonya Massey, man. A prayers to the uh, father, uh, to her son, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Sorry about that. It's your boy Almighty. It's your boy JL. Look, man, bro talk is back, man. Back and forth. Bro talk, bro. It's, it's bro talk. Bro? Bro talk. Bro talk? Like, bro talk, bro. Bro talk? Bro, say it with me. Bro. Bro. Talk. Talk. Bro talk. Bro, what the fuck is? Bro talk, bro. Bro, bro, talk, bro come on. Anyway, bro talk, bro talk is back, man. You know what I'm saying? When the homies kick back, you know what I'm saying? We chill, we talk about, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Vibes, smoke a bleasy, you know what I'm saying? Drink so, you know what I mean? What are we like? You said bro talk? Bro talk, bro. Bro talk. Bro talk, yeah. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? So go ahead, hit that subscribe button, man. So, you know what I mean? Enjoy the buzz, you know what I'm saying? Kick back, you know what I'm saying?